Mark Horvath started Invisible People to give a voice to people who often don't have one, the homeless. Over the past few years, Mark has met with and documented the stories of thousands of homeless individuals through his YouTube channel. Today, he joins us to talk about his latest partnership and how he sees nonprofit storytelling evolving. I'm 49 years old. I don't have any savings. Probably one of my unconscious driving forces is I'm trying to solve homelessness within the next five, ten years, so I don't end up on the streets. Did you know that LA is the homeless capital of the country? Tonight you'll meet a man who's trying to do something about it using social media and YouTube. Hi YouTube, my name is Mark. I started something called InvisiblePeople.tv where I empower homeless people to tell their own stories. I started using social media not because I wanted to be a social media guru, but because it's free. I miss being domestic, you know, I'm kind of losing that feeling. You're homeless um, with your two daughters. We're overplaying. Tell me about it. Dude, I've been on the streets for almost five years, bro. I want, I want to get out of here. Yeah. How long have you been out on the streets? This is my first day. Today's my 18th birthday. We had a house at one point. We had vehicles. <laughs> We had everything and it kind of just, it fell apart. At one point when this is all happening, you feel like a failure. You think, you know what, there are still people worse off than you. There are people who are living under bridges. Do you believe that you just feel their pain? A rain cloud, rain on. <laughs> this didn't exist last year and I think with Mark's visit, provided really kind of a catalyst and a rally point for our community. Here I am, an unemployed guy without income, with an iPhone, and my, my number one tool is Twitter, and people are being fed because I'm Twittering. You look at invisiblepeople.tv, none of it makes sense. If I have business friends and they say, you'll never be sustainable, it's not your normal nonprofit. But the impact, right now 40,000 videos a month are being watched, and this isn't Disney or porn. I was a television guy. I mean, I made a lot of money. And in 1995, I sold pictures of my iguana to tourists on Hollywood Boulevard. I was wasted. I was crazy, out of my mind, wasted. Marky with this program tore up completely. And really, when I saw him, I thought to myself, this guy has no chance to change. You know, what did you think when I was about ready to become homeless? Did you see that coming? Oh, yeah. I almost killed me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's one of my regrets. Is yeah. what did did to you? I. But um. Barry, we're here under Vegas. Tell me about it. Uh, came out here to kill a day before I went back to my home state. Had a backpack stolen with my money and got stranded here. The public hasn't been educated on this. You know, they just see, you know, they don't see it as real people. Each feather fell from skin Till Fred Bam, she grew I've been fighting my own homelessness, and it's because of you guys that I'm not only still surviving and not homeless, but I'm able to help other homeless people. The uh, Calgary community, uh, they saw the video of Donnie on Invisible People. TV and then they rally to get them into housing. The number one thing that I want people to know about homelessness is we can solve it. There's times that I want to quit because I think it's so hard that I think, well, why haven't you changed already? Come on, can't you see this? Can't you see what I see? They kicked 600 people out into the rain yesterday morning, this morning. Hi everybody, uh, I'm so excited and happy giving 
Tuesday. Uh, first, I want to say this is history in the making. It's the first ever Hangout-a-thon, and I want to thank Google and I want to thank Mashable for making this all happen. And it's really exciting. And obviously, if you watch that clip, you know, you know, homelessness is the cause that's dearest to my heart. So for the next few minutes, I got a couple of guests, and we're going to uh, talk about, you know, why it's important to fuel the mission of fighting homelessness. But first, I'm really excited to announce, because the reason I'm here in New York in the first place is to launch Hang's Sock Giveaway. It's a Christmas event we do every year, and it's so amazing, because starting today for the month of December, we're going to give a half million pairs of socks. A half million pairs of, what? Well, excuse me, 500,000 socks, 250,000 pairs of socks. So if you want to follow along as we go through this, um, follow the tag, Hanes for Good, you know, hashtag Hanes for Good. But first, let me introduce my guests. We'll get more about socks in a moment. Um, we have Barbara Poppy, who is from the Interagency Council of Homelessness. So she is actually um, the, the head of the federal response to fighting homelessness in, in America. And, and Barbara is just an amazing person, a personal hero of mine. And then we have Tina Kelly, who uh, is a youth homelessness advocate that works for Covenant House. So, but first, let's start with Barbara. Um, you know, why, why, you know what, what's going on in homelessness, and, and how can the general public really see an impact in moving the needle? Well, hey, Mark. It's uh, good to see you. And awesome. It's really good. Um, I guess the, the first thing is I want to say, like, there's some really good news out there on homelessness. Uh, we know how to solve it. We know what needs to get done. And there are communities making tremendous progress on addressing and ending homelessness. Across the country, over the last three years, we've reduced veterans' homelessness by 24%, chronic homelessness by 18%. But the reality is we're still not doing good enough. We need to get more people off the streets and into their own apartments. What I'm so excited about when I think of when you, when you talk about the socks is I think about folks I knew from my day back in Columbus. And as they moved into housing and I got to visit them in their apartments, often they told me, I said, well, what's the most exciting thing about this? And they said, well, look, I want to show you. I have a drawer and I have dry socks. You do not know how important dry socks are. So um, I think to solve homelessness, it's about housing. Uh, but there's a lot of places that everybody can contribute to that because we've got to deal with youth and children and families and veterans um, and single adults. I mean, there, there's plenty of work to get done out there. Thank you. And um, Tina, uh, we've been trying to do a Google Hangout for the longest time, and here we are, finally Yay. happening. So uh, could you tell us a little bit about Covenant House? I know uh, a, a bunch of socks are headed your way and what you all doing with youth homelessness, which is so very important, and what you have going on for uh, Giving uh, Tuesday. Well, we are so grateful, Mark, for, for your work and admire it greatly. And we are very, very grateful to be giving 10,000 pairs of socks for the homeless young people in New York and New Jersey. Covenant House reaches out to 61,000 young people each year in 16 cities in the United States as well as two cities in Canada and four in Latin America. These are kids who are 17 to 21, and they are very, very vulnerable to life on the streets. They're vulnerable to being traffic. They're vulnerable to disease and death. And if we can provide them a safe place to be with warm, clean socks, we're, we're doing a great thing, and we hope people join in with us for Giving Tuesday. We have a gift catalog where uh, you can donate, say, for $10, you can provide food for a day to a young person. For $25, you can provide a warm coat, and that's covenanthouse.org backslash gift. Thank you. You know, it's Giving Tuesday, and there's a lot of great, great organizations out there. Um, they're doing great work uh, trying to make the world a better place. So, you know, all I'm saying is consider fighting homelessness. And you should actually, you know, help fund the homeless services in your own commu community. Uh, you, you fight homelessness at a local level. So here on Giving Tuesday, you know, um, let's put a dent in 
fighting homelessness by um, you know really supporting your local homeless services. Um, but I have to go back to the socks thing. As you guys follow me on Invisible People, you know I travel all over giving socks. And Hanes socks, these things are just the best. And for Hanes, I mean, it's not a gimmick. It's, you know, there's no, you don't have to go like a Facebook page or anything else. They're just giving. They're just giving 250,000 pairs of socks to homeless people to be distributed through the Salvation Army and, and several organizations. That is just amazing. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, we, and I'm going to go back to Barbara on this because I think a lot of the general public disconnects from the homeless cause because we look at it and we say we can't do anything. So, you know, follow uh, the tag, uh, Hands for Good, and uh, support your local homeless services. And, you know, keep a pair of socks in your glove box for when you pass that homeless guy at the exit ramp. Keep a pair. Now, I recommend Hanes. They're the best. But you know what? You know, grab some socks. Keep them in your, in your pocketbook or whatever, you know. And the next time you run across that homeless person, give them a smile. You know, I, I ran into a homeless kid once that I gave him some Hanes socks, and he would start yelling, white gold, white gold. You know what I mean? So, um, Barbara, the general public, you know, you know, looks at homelessness compared to all the other causes. I'm going to be real here for a second. We're, we're in that Thanksgiving season where homelessness is sexy for a short time, but the rest of the time it's not. You know what I mean? And can you address real quick the, you know, why the general public can really um, you know, see a difference in making homelessness, ending homelessness? So I think uh, first and foremost, people need to understand that homelessness is happening in every community, whether it's a rural community, a suburban community, or a big city. And there's a way for everyone to get connected and to be a part of a solution. And being part of a solution means providing real life assistance that gets folks up and off the streets and into their own apartments. And I think we've seen um, faith-based organizations that help furnish an apartment for someone to move into. Uh, we also have seen that um, there can be Girl Scout troops that collect diapers um, for the family shelter um, in order for the moms to have uh, you know, diapers for their kids. So there's a range of ways uh, to get engaged in the local work. Um, but first and foremost, by getting engaged, you actually begin to see people who experience homelessness as our neighbors. They, they're very much like you or I, and that face-to-face -face connection I think is one that can inspire folks to move on to the bigger, the bigger challenges, which is having adequate public policy supporting for, for housing and treatment and health care that really are the solutions to homelessness. Um, and, and Tina, thank you, Barbara. And Tina, going to you real quick. Um, I know uh, there's been some uh, laws, you know, the runaway uh, youth wasn't renewed in, in Congress and different things. Um, what can the general public do, both in advocacy at the big level and locally, to, to help fight youth homelessness? Because it's, youth homelessness is really important. We got to, you know, we got to stop these kids from becoming adult homeless people. Um, and it's very important that we all work together to do that. Right, that's so true, and that's why the work is so hopeful. You can reach young people when they're at a crossroads and get into um, productive lives. We ask our followers to reach out to their representatives in Washington and tell them that runaway and homelessness mean a lot to them. We ask our neighbors in towns all across the United States to, as you said, reach out to homeless shelters, to groups that work with young people, to mentoring organizations and schools where you can devote your volunteer time to help young people. They need someone who believes in them 100% and holds them to a high standard. And having someone who loves them and believes in them can make all the difference in the world for them. We also ask um, volunteers to come to shelters and bring birthday cakes or bring, uh, make Christmas cookies with them, have a movie night, just to let them know that the outside world cares about them. And, and that's why it's socks that you're bringing us. It's so important because at the shelters tonight will know that they're not forgotten. Um, it, it's really cool uh, that Google and Mashable is doing this first ever Hangout-a-thon. I hope it's the first of many. Um, and we're really going to move the needle on giving today. We're, uh, 
you know, all of you out there, I believe, I believe, sorry, I'm, I'm that, you know, glass half full guy. So I, I believe we're all good and we all want to do something for change. So today is Giving Tuesday and, you know, my, my Twitter is at Hardly Normal. So add the tag Haynes for good and please um, let me know. And it doesn't have to be for a homeless organization. If you're out there, tweet to me and let me know, um, where you're given, and it could be your time. I mean, a lot of people don't have money these days. You know, sign up to volunteer someplace, do something that um, uh, really makes a difference in the world tomorrow. Um, I like to tell the, the one story of when I first started. Um, I, I, I worked in an organization that um, we would, you know, I called it like the homeless SWAT team. You would get a call, and you never know where. Uh, you know who who it is you're going to pick up, and so we run to this park, and there's a homeless family. So I get the homeless family in the van, and I drive them back to the agency, and it's our job to connect them to services. So as I'm unloading the van, um, because there's like two year olds and babies and baby carriages, as I'm unloading the van, there was a rock, and you know, so I grabbed the rock and I'm going to throw it away. I thought it was just you know a dirty van, and and the the father grabbed my hand. And he took the rock out and he gave, I'm going to get emotional, and he gave it to the baby. They're homeless. They can't afford Toys R Us. The only thing that he could give to his kid was this flat, shiny rock. You know, and that really stayed with me. Um, what I do is empowering homeless people to tell their own story. So go to invisiblepeople.tv, watch one video, watch 10 videos. If you feel like donating, there's a donating button. I'm grateful. Thank you. But it's more important, as Barbara said and Tina said, that we start looking at our homeless neighbors as real people. You know, I believe that once you know Jim, Susie, Popcorn, Sandy, uh, Tiny, and all the different people's names, that it's harder to walk by. And that's what we're doing. You know, there's an organization here in New York that's great. It's called Don't Walk By, that they go out uh, and try to get uh, homeless people off the streets. Um, it's another great organization if you're in New York City um, to volunteer with. Uh, if you're looking for um, any place uh, to volunteer around the country, please, I'll be monitoring the tag, Haynes for Good, um, and, um, you know, if I'll try to connect you to whatever locally. Because um, we need to do something. We need to do something to end homelessness in our community. So we have a few minutes left, um, and uh, I'm just going to open it up. Barbara, any thoughts? Uh, ju just in closing, I, I just um, think on Giving Tuesday, it's important to support the breadth of organizations um, in your community, as well as think about, you know, organizations that have national impact, whether that's the work that Mark does through Invisible People, the National Alliance to End Homelessness, the National Coalition for the Homeless. There's a large number of groups really trying to make a difference in your local communities right. and are depending on you for support. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Okay. Tina, Tina, you've got about 30 seconds. Okay. Well, I, I'd like to ask people to, to learn more about homelessness. Kevin Ryan and I wrote a book last year called Almost Home, Helping kids move from homelessness to hope. It tells the six true stories of kids who progress through homelessness to the futures they deserve. And it also has a whole chapter on what you can do to help. Very cool. So I gotta wrap up. It's time to go. Gotta thank Google. Gotta thank Mashable. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Haynes. Two hundred and fifty thousand pairs of socks going to our homeless friends out on the street. Love you. Thank you. Follow along with the tag, Haynes for Good. Please, it's Giving Tuesday. Do something. Do something to make a difference. Could be volunteering, could be donating. I'm not saying where to give your money or where to give your time. You'll figure it out. There's plenty of great places. But don't end today without doing something. Thank you.